Hi, we are going to have a quick look at how to calculate value at risk using the delta normal approach. Now, when we use the delta normal approach, we make some very strong assumptions which are not true in reality. And this is one of the reasons, even though the delta normal approach is one of the most simplest way to calculate value at risk and also some textbook says it's a most popular method of calculating value at risk in reality most of the large financial institutions do not use the delta normal approach to calculate value at risk most financial institutions do use the historical simulation or the monte carlo simulation approach to calculate value at risk now there are some corporates and sometimes tier 3 banks or smaller banks who use delta normal value at risk based on their risk profile for a financial institution which has huge amount of risk using delta normal approach will not give an accurate or a true picture of the VAR. so let's first go through some of the assumptions that we consider when using the delta normal value at risk and going through the assumptions itself will help you to understand why using the delta normal approach might not be the best approach for very large financial institutions so when we use the delta normal value at risk we assume the movements in the value of the risk factor so remember for example here i'm showing you a call option the relationship between so so this green curve shows you the relationship between the option price and the underlying risk factor in this case the stock price so let's assume that this is a call option on a particular stock so you can see as the stock price changes the option price changes and the relationship is not linear in other words it's a curve so it's not a straight line so when we use the delta normal approach we assume the movements in the value of the risk factor so that's the movement remember in this case the risk factor stock price is a risk factor so we assume the movements in the value of the risk factor follows a normal distribution now we know that financial variables do not follow a normal distribution interest rates affects commodity prices or even equity prices such as the stock price that we know that those variables financial variables they normally exhibit fat tails in other words they could have extreme losses more than what a normal distribution could indicate so that's one of the major drawbacks of the delta normal approach because when we use the delta normal approach we are assuming the risk factor now in this case the stock price the daily stock changes in stock price follows a normal distribution which is not true so the second assumption is that the change in the value of the risk factor to the change in the price of the derivative so in other words the slope remember the change in the price of the derivative to the change in the risk factor in this case the stock price is basically the slope so we assume the change in the value of the risk factor to the change in the price of the derivative has a linear relationship now we know that this is not true for nonlinear derivatives for example if you look at here the relationship between change in option prices and change in stock prices follows a curve in other words it's not a straight line so it's not a linear relationship so you can see already these two assumptions are quite questionable given these drawbacks still some firms use the delta normal approach to estimate VAR at a very high level so remember you could estimate VAR at a very high level but it's far from accurate so it's important that you remember this so now when using the delta normal value at risk approach in order to calculate the VAR of a particular derivative in this case the call option you simply need two inputs you need the delta of the derivative so in this case the delta of the call option now if you think about this the delta of the call option keeps changing it's not a constant and this is one of the issues the relationship between the option price and the stock price is not a linear relationship you can see it's a non-linear relationship the reason being the delta keeps changing remember the delta is simply the slope because the slope tells you at a, at a particular point the slope will tell you the change 
in the y axis to the change in the x axis. Now, as you move along the, this green curve, the slope keeps changing. Now, because the slope keeps changing, that means the delta will change. The y you would estimate using the delta normal approach at a particular point will not be true as you move along the curve. In other words, the y you might estimate using the delta normal approach at this point might be different if the stock price tomorrow moves somewhere here. So it's very important to remember that. So once you have the delta, you just need to calculate the value at risk of the underlying risk factor. Now in this case, the risk factor is the stock price. So we need to calculate the value at risk of the risk factor. So let's do that. So the let's assume that we want to calculate the 5% VAR. So the 5% value at risk is caused by the stock shifting. So now here we are we're making some assumptions. So let's assume that the average daily returns of the stock is zero. In other words, the mean is zero. So given that we are assuming the daily returns of the stock follows a normal distribution, remember that's an assumption when we use the delta normal approach. If we assume the daily returns of the stock follows a normal distribution, the 5% worse losses will be 1.65 standard deviations away from the mean for a normal distribution. So in order to calculate the 5% value at risk, we need to come to this point here. So that's mean minus 1.65 standard deviations. So your mean is zero. So that's what here we have put zero minus 1.65. Remember standard deviation is simply the volatility. So let's assume the daily volatility of this stock is 2%. So this point here is 0 minus 1.65 times daily volatility. Remember, it's 1.65 standard deviations. So that gives us minus 3.3%. So what this tells us is that the one day value at risk of the underlying risk factor, in this case, the stock is 3.3% with 95% confidence level. In other words, the 5% of this underlying risk factor is 3.3%. So once we calculate the value at risk of the underlying risk factor, we simply need to calculate the delta of the option at this point here. So let's assume that the delta of the call option at point A is 7%. So that's what we have put here, 7%. So Remember, delta of the call option is simply the change in the price of the call for a 1% change in the stock price. So let's assume that if you're at point A and if the stock price moves by 1%, your option price will move by 7%. So that's my delta of the call option. So once I have the delta of the call option and the VAR of the risk factor, so remember delta of the call option and the VAR of the risk factor, which is 3.3%, I can calculate the VAR of the call option. So at this point, the VAR of my call option is 23.1%. In other words, so this is the, we are calculating the one day value at risk. So what I'm saying is, in, in a day, my option can lose 23.1% of its value, 95% of the time, because I'm calculating 5% VAR. So 95% of the time, my option can lose 23.1%. So that, there's a 5% chance that it could lose more than this, but 95% of the time, the maximum it could lose in a day, because we are, we are calculating the one day VAR, is 23.1%. So you can see, now there are some issues with this whole calculation. As you can see here, now, we calculated at this particular point the value at risk of the option as 23.1%. But as you can see, as you move along, as you move along, either as the stock price increases or the stock price decreases, you can see the option price to the stock price is not linear. It's not linear. It's a curve. In other words, what we are saying is, but 
if you just move a little bit from this point up somewhere here or somewhere here the difference is not much so what we are saying is for a small shift so if you're somewhere here for a small shift if the stock price moves a little bit like this you can see the difference between the green curve and the gray straight line is not much for a small shift so what that means is the delta normal value at risk estimate in this case we are saying 23.1 percent it might be correct at a very high level remember at a very high level for a small shift in the underlying but for a larger shift let's assume the stock price moves quite a lot for a larger shift you can see the option price is higher than what we would estimate using the linear relationship because you can see the green line is above the gray straight line the, the green curve is above the gray straight line so whether the stock price increases a large increase or a large decrease you can see you will underestimate the option price using this linear relationship because the actual option price is far higher than what we would estimate using the linear relationship so what this means is that the delta normal y approach might you could use this for a small shift in the stock price but if there's a larger shift if the stock price moves a lot then your estimate will be the difference in your estimate will be quite large in other words you'll have a bias result so that's something to remember the delta normal y approach is not practical to use for non-linear derivatives and if you use it for non-linear derivatives for smaller shifts it might the estimate might be closer to the real number but for larger shifts in the underlying the bias will be quite large in other words the difference will be quite large now this is one of the shortfalls of the delta normal approach and one of the ways to fix this is introducing the delta gamma approximation so in other words if you look at this white dotted line what we are saying is in addition to the delta if we introduce another component called the gamma of the option then the option price to stock price relationship will become very close to the real change in the option price to stock price you can see the dotted white line is very close to the green line so what we are saying is we can use a delta gamma approximation you can also call this the taylor approximation in order to calculate value at risk for non-linear derivatives and this will give you a better estimate of your va compared to the delta normal approach and and the reason being the, the reason we are using this delta gamma approximation is since option prices to its underlying risk factors in this case stock price does not have a linear relationship in other words the delta keeps changing so in another video i will talk about the delta gamma approximation or the taylor approximation which will give you a better estimate of your value at risk so remember if you simply use the delta normal va approach you will the the value at risk number you will estimate will be different or will not be accurate for larger moves in the underlying now for example here we are calculating the one day va 5% well va of the call option for a day now if you try to calculate the one week va where the time horizon is long let's assume in a week the stock price can move quite quite a lot compared to a daily daily move then so the value at risk number you'll be calculating will not be accurate so this is something to remember as well so remember using the delta normal y approach you can simply calculate the y of a derivative by simply multiplying the delta of that derivative times the y of the underlying risk factor and one thing to remember is that there are two assumptions two main assumptions that the underlying risk factor follows a normal distribution and also the change in the derivative to change in the underlying stock price 
is constant, which we know is not true for non-linear derivatives. And finally, the delta normal approach can be used as a high level estimate for small movements in the underlying risk factor, but for larger movements in the underlying risk factor, it does not give a good estimate of your value at risk. If you have any questions, post it in the comment section or drop us an email. If you like this video, you can click like and subscribe to our channel and I'll be posting more similar videos in the near future. Thank you.